Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Here we go. That is what are the formalities that we are going to that uh, we have to fill up in a load sheet. So this is a uh, copy of a flight plan. That is a computerized flight plan. Uh, can everyone see the screen? Yes, sir. Is the screen clear? Yeah. So uh, I need to know that before we start off uh, with the load sheet. I like to just give you a brief about uh, what what it is written on a flight plan. So as you can see in the top, you can see that it's written plan seven four one seven computed thirteen fifty eight Zulu. So uh, according to the uh, that is this computerized plan, the computerized plan has been released at one fifty eight that is Zulu time. So all uh, as I said you earlier. We have all the time written in Zulus, so that uh, the travel will be constant. So, if you go and talk to a captain, make sure that you always talk to them in Zulu time rather than talking to them in local times, because they won't be interested in that. So, you can always conversation, uh, communicate them, communicate with them only in Zulu time. Then we'll have the flight, uh, the day, the departure station, and the arrival station. So, anyone has idea what the flight number is? You can. Uh, A, it's written as AI one two three. So, what does this AI stands for? Air India. Air India. Yes, exactly. Airline yes. code. Yes, that's in the that's the airline code. That is uh, AI stands for Air India. Uh, the flight number will be one two three. Uh, what does day represent? What is it? Uh, what does the uh, day represent? So, what does the day represent? Six. Six represent the day, sir. Yes, uh, six. What does it mean? What does six means? Is it is it the date or is it the day? What does it mean? It's a day, I think. Saturday. Yes, it is. Yes, it is Saturday. So the flight number with the day is a Saturday. So where is the date written in this? Where will be the date written? On the right okay. side. Okay, the top right. Yes, exactly. It's written on the right side. That is zero six zero nine zero four. So 2004, September 6th. Okay. Uh, we have the departure and arrival stations. That is ORY and CAA. Then we have the flight time. That is 3 hours and 58 minutes. Then we'll have the NAM code. That is 1672. We'll have the route. That is ORY, CAA and CBT. So these are, this is normally not given in a uh, three-letter uh, IATA code. It will be always in the Four letter recover code. Then we have the average uh, average wind speed and the average temperature. So this will be common in all the flight plans. Next, we'll be having that information that is regarding max payload available. Uh, it's 1,800, uh, 18,220 kgs. And there is another information given right behind, right below that it's payload limited by maximum landing weight. So what is this maximum landing weight? We'll go through the, we'll just have a brief session of this and go to the load sheet. So there we'll understand what is this maximum landing weight and all. Next, we'll have the destination. Uh, is given as estimate fuel. That is 10495. Uh, what does that mean? Destination is 10495 estimate fuel. So what does 10495 mean? So, what can be considered as one zero four nine five? It must. It must be a cost of the fuel. Actually, in flight plan, you need not worry about the cost. So, actually, that is uh, the weight. 
that is uh, 10495 kgs of fuel is burned for the two sectors so if the flight is going from ORY to CAI that is uh, Orlando to Caros city so the trip time is about 3 hours and 58 minutes and the fuel burned for that trip is 10495 kgs so is that okay. is that calculating like uh, up and down or uh, only the uh, origin and the destination yeah, origin and the destination. The, it is considered as the trip trip uh, trip fuel. Achha, okay. So Achha. what? So when the aircraft is taking off after the takeoff, once okay. the takeoff station is completed, the point from where it will start its journey to Cairo uh -huh. till it lands. So that will be the trip fuel. So once it initiates the landing, the trip fuel will be uh, burned. So these are all estimate fuels. That is ten thousand four ninety five. Mostly, Captain, round off. Uh, to the next, that is 10,500 kgs round off. That will be the trip fuel. So why this trip fuel is, uh, they'll feed this information to the aircraft so that they could calculate uh, whether the aircraft is safe during land or takeoff. As you can see that uh, just above the uh, estimated fuel, payload limited by maximum landing weight. So how did that calculation come? That calculation we'll see in the load sheet. Uh, just before that, we'll just finish off this uh, one. Next, we'll have a, a reserve fuel. That is 525 kgs of reserve fuel. That is, they'll be holding the aircraft for about 12 minutes. So that's the uh, extra fuel that's on board the aircraft, just to hold the aircraft in case in emergency or due to bad weather, the aircraft can't land or due to high traffic, the aircraft has to go around uh, two or three times in the airport. So for that is taken as reserve. That is, in case of an emergency, they can use those fuel. Then we have the alternate fuel, that is 1,998, that's almost two tons. So this alternate fuel is uh, in case the aircraft can't land at a particular uh, spot. Say it's not allowed, it cannot land at a uh, KRO because of heavy traffic, it should go to another station or another alternate destination that fuel will be calculated. So that fuel will be only calculated and put along with this fuel. And that will be 1,980. That is our almost two tons of fuel will be uh, for the alternate destination. Then we'll have the hold. Normally this hold fuel is uh, considered as contingency. That is in case the aircraft can't take up uh, that it has to, it 100% it has to be under hold till the uh, ATC gives clearance. For example, if you take airports like uh, USA and uh, say about in New York and all, they will be fixedly, they'll be putting in their flight plan the hold fuel. That is at least minimum of, uh, in this case, we have 30 minutes. So minimum of 30 minutes, you need to hold the aircraft in the air. At certain situations, sorry. So at certain situations, we cannot uh, allow the aircraft to hold there for 30 minutes. Maybe any emergency case or uh, due to that reason, the aircraft has to come in uh, once they reach there. So due to that conditions, they will accept. But normally in uh, heavy heavy uh, traffic areas, the fuel will be, I mean, the whole fuel will be always added along with the flight plan. So that's for the hold. Uh, then we have XTR. That is the extra fuel. Normally, you will have extra fuel if the weather condition is very bad. XTR will be extra fuel in case the aircraft, uh, which is going to the destination, for example, in this sector, it's going to Cairo. And for example, if there is any sandstorm or windstorm and the aircraft needs extra fuel, that is the burn rate will be high during that sector, extra fuel will be also added along the flight plan. That will be on basis of the weather conditions that we uh, first uh, analyze during the analyze stage. If we see uh, something like windstorm or a sandstorm, those fuel will be added extra. That is the extra fuel will be added extra. Next, we have the takeoff fuel that is 14,275. So this total, that is the destination fuel, that is the trip fuel. Why are we calculating the... Total fuel, we are including the extra fuel as well, right? 
yes we'll be calc- we'll be putting the extra fuel uh, also so in this sector i think we don't have any extra fuel so that is the weather is normal that is a normal condition uh, the aircraft is flying in case if uh, during okay. the weather report the emergency what they will do then yeah that is that is we call the alternate destination that is uh, reserve fuel 525 kg of reserve fuel in case if there is an emergency and uh, by reaching the destination by the time you reach us when you start you don't see any uh, problem in the sector and by the time you reach to the uh, sector at that particular time if you see any if you if you see any uh, danger or example a sandstorm coming or a thunderstorm this reserve fuel that is the 525 kg of reserve fuel will will be taken or normally in normal case if there's no such issues the aircraft will land with the reserve fuel Okay. Okay. Nice. Then takeoff fuel is fourteen thousand two seventy five. Then we have the taxi one forty kg. So taxi fuel is based on the airport size. So the distance from the airport ramp to the takeoff point that will be taken as the taxi fuel. If you take, uh, for example, in Orlando, I think it's a little bit less. It's about one forty kg. But if you take uh, airports like Sharjah. the distance will be very long so they'll put it round off as 200 kg then we have the block fuel that is 14415 kg and the total trip, the total uh, fuel that we are calculating is for 5 hours and 28 minutes as you all know that uh, the flight time is only 3 hours and 58 minutes but when we add these all uh, say trip fuel and extra reserve fuel so we are taking all the precautionary steps to make sure that the aircraft lands safely there that due to that reason we'll have an average block fuel of 14450 this will be released say about 3 or 4 hours before the flight and in case uh, the aircraft um, before the uh, that is when the captain comes for the uh, boarding he'll confirm that whether he's going with the same flight plan or will he need to uh, change that is he will be using either he'll be increasing the fuel details from the flight plan say about 14415 kg is the actual block fuel so he might make it into 15000 that is uh, he'll get the latest weather report of the destination and the origin i mean and the uh, station on route it is the on route actually the uh, flight plan will be given by uh, the dispatcher right yes exactly the flight plan will be given by the dispatcher and okay. he'll hand over this to the captain the commander will give checks he will be checking it and he will be asking also the weather report okay. because he so, like if there is any change for example like uh, once we submitted the report in the flight, uh, flight plan to the captain after that okay. is there any change like uh, if we could do i mean whether we could do that or not yes if there is any change if there is any last minute change you need not change the flight plan you can give that changes only to the captain for example if the weather report uh, Uh, earlier you took was normal and you didn't add any extra fuel yeah so for example uh, let's make it that the wind storm or a sand storm in uh, cairo and the extra fuel is not added in this flight plan that is the same flight plan you give and later on just be, just before the captain comes you get the information that there is a possibility of a sand storm over there so you can inform the captain captain we have the latest speed report of the destination saying that there is a sand storm okay no problem i'll be taking another 1000 kg extra so according to the captain's will you can add another 1000 kg and what you do next is once the captain add 1000 kg extra say 14000 pound so from, uh, from whom we will take the permission other than the captain like uh, the, for the changing in the flight plan see changing the flight plan you need not take permission from anyone because you are the dispatcher you are the one who created and designed you are the one who uh, did that you are authorized to do that changes so you only inform the captain that rather than changing the flight plan you just inform the captain captain uh, we have a change in the flight plan that is the weather report in cairo is very bad and they are uh, they are suspecting that there's a chance of sandstorm so captain will say okay uh, in that case i will be taking another 1000 or 1200 kg of extra fuel so that you do the changes in the new flight plan and give him the latest word, latest edition before the Uh, flight begins its journey okay. so that's not going to take much of time since it's computerized you won't be taking much more time to just recalculate and do 
you just feed up the fuel extra fuel will be 1000 kg and this much extra minutes will be used and then we hand over that to cattle okay okay, okay that's for the uh, block fuel this is the fuel details and next we'll going we'll be going to the load sheet part that is uh, the weight weighs basic weight 42500 that is the dry operating weight of the aircraft 42500 kg then we'll have expected payload that is about 18220 kg and as you can see that estimate zero fuel weight is 60720 kg uh, in that you can see the maximum zero fuel weight also that is also 61000 so you can see that we have about 280 kg difference that is you can uplift another 280 kg of payload that is passenger baggage or cargo into the aircraft more that is a point that you can see in estimated zero fuel weight and the maximum zero fuel weight then you have the takeoff fuel uh, can anyone tell me what is the takeoff fuel of the aircraft so what is the takeoff fuel of the aircraft sir it must be it must be used at the take off uh, take yeah, yeah. off time i need the numbers i need the numbers what is the number Three. what is the weight 14 to 75 sir right uh 14 14 to 75 sir yes exactly take off fuel will be 14 to 75 uh, that is the fuel that is remaining at the point of take off so that is called a take off fuel so once you put 14415 kg on to the aircraft when the aircraft starts from the ramp to the take off point it will burn about approximately 140 kg so at the point of take off the weight uh, the fuel uh, the fuel weight will be 14275 and uh, next that is take off fuel and then we will have the estimated take off weight that is 74995 so as you can see that the actual take off weight is 77 tons it is 77000 kg so the difference is how much what is the difference in take off what will be the difference in the take off i think it's uh, 2005 kg yes uh, it's 2005 kg of difference is there that is the aircraft can now uplift another 2 tons more fuel so in that case if you have the xtr in this case is zero so if you have a problem in the destination and the aircraft is required to uh, uplift another another fuel so you can uh, say if the captain say i need about 1500 kg or maybe uh, 1000 kg or some 1600 kg yes you can accept that because the takeoff weight will not be affected anyway during the landing time the aircraft will not be having this fuel if it's using extra fuel just for uh, during the trip if anything goes wrong or uh, due to bad weather the fuel combustion is high you can use that extra fuel to burn that uh, burn burn for that trip so another 2005 kg of fuel is accepted in this aircraft that is you have space for another 2 tons of fuel then we have estimated burn off uh, the first number 10495 and when you minus that that is take off estimated take off weight minus the burn off you get the landing weight so in this uh, as you can see that estimated landing weight and the maximum land weight of the aircraft is same that is 64500 this is the reason so that is what in the i mean the probably we are doing in the like uh, computerized flight planning right yeah, no, this is all, this, yeah this is all computerized so, so there is so nothing to be worried about equations and all it's all like right, it's pre uh, sorry i didn't get you it's, uh, it's pre calculated right i mean we don't need to apply anything right yes uh, this is this is normally pre calculated but what i'm trying to tell you here is, is the zero fuel weight see here the zero fuel weight is 6720 and based on that zero fuel weight only you will be giving this flight plan to the captain okay fine you need a weight 
to calculate the fuel that is uh, based on the aircraft capacity you need to know how much fuel you can uplift into the aircraft and when you are uplifting into the aircraft you also need that for example 6720 kg of zero fuel weight you have so the maximum uplift you can go for the aircraft is say about uh, instead of 14000 you can put something around 16000 uh, to 90 kg or to 80 kg 16280 kg of fuel can be loaded into the aircraft with this zero fuel weight you get my point yeah got it no so 16280 kg of fuel can go inside this aircraft and during after this uh, uh, when you take off with 16280 the aircraft will not have any issues because the take off weight is maximum 77 tons but in the case of landing when it comes to landing after burning of 10495 if the remaining fuel plus your zero fuel weight is not less than 64500 then your aircraft need to release more fuel that is either it should burn it or you have to uh, let it loose that is you have to dump the fuel so at that stage when you dump your fuel the captains or the airlines will not accept that because that's a loss for the company and as you all know that for 1 liter of uh, atf at this present stage it's something around 60 60 rupees or 65 rupees that is uh, petrol and the diesel price have hiked so the atf also has hiked earlier it was only 35 or 40 now it has reached somewhere across uh, somewhere near 60 and 65 so you can't just keep on uh, dumping fuel just for uh, no use so you're just dumping it it's just a waste fuel so based on the zero fuel weight the fuel that you take should have enough purpose the captain may take extra leave that to the captain because uh, he is the one who is flying so he will look at his comfortable zone but when it comes to the flight plan that is according to what your plan is based on that only he will be taking extra fuel that's for the estimated landing weight then we have seen, then we have is a flight limit that is flight level here it is 350 that is 35000 feet 35000 feet will be the height then we'll have a, a sit on that that is it is allowed for another uh, rise that is it can go up to 370 that is 37000 feet next routes to alternates one is alexar and uh, uh, other one is the luxor so since it's going to cairo the one uh, the alternate route that it has been uh, specified is the luxor that is luxembourg city and that will in luxembourg city will be the one that is will be that will be the alternate sector that is uh, alternate station for us flight level that you will use is 39000 feet for that now these codes these are the route airways that uh, the aircraft will be flying from so name lfpo uh, lewell epl lsat tra so i'll give you uh, i'll give you an idea of what is this i'll be sending that notes that is uh, about there are 15 sorry uh, 14 to 15 annexures that you need to know uh, you can keep that notes with you because that will be the one we'll be referring when we are doing it manually that is you need as a flight dispatcher you need to know how to manually draw a aeronautical chart or you need to know how to plan how you are doing the calculations so during that sessions i'll teach you how many type of airways we have what are the altitudes for each airway and how we are uh, making sure that there will be no clashes in a single airway okay now the orly airport chart so uh, you guys can see the uh, airport chart the orly airport chart not exactly actually it's it's showing like it's blur it's blur yeah okay okay is it clear now at least at least you could read something right yes sir yeah so uh, this is yes, the airport sir. chart uh, this is the airport chart Uh, actually this is not used uh, normally for uh, 
a uh, say about a uh, instrument flight rules because this is normally used for uh, visual flight since you are given a computerized flight plan all the details regarding the airport and your on en route a route plus your destination all details will be given in the flight plan so in case if that is not a instrument flight rule uh, flight plan it's going for visual you need to provide this uh, airport chart to the captain uh, in another case if you are giving a computerized flight plan also they'll have this but it will be digitalized so it will be a digital uh, airport chart that they'll be holding just to know which runway would be favorable for their takeoff and that will be requested to the atc tower during uh, pushback so in case if uh, the aircraft which is going to uh, run say about uh, we can take the uh, second runway that is let me see uh excuse uh, me so let me ask yeah. you one thing like uh, yeah, is there any definite uh, place in the runway like such aircraft a particular aircraft should be there should be there uh, is is there something like that uh, that will be depend upon the runway that is that information will be known only to the atc tower Achha. for example if you if you take a runway in this you can see that runway 28 and you have another one called 07 in the other side okay so in this uh, orly you have three runways mm -hmm. so for example if you take two or 8 and 7 this 8 will have a runway length of 4 ton for 4000 kilometers and 2 will have a runway of 3500 kilometers if an aircraft that is an airbus 380 with maximum full payload is arriving according to you which runway will you prefer that aircraft to land it will be uh, runway number 2 with 3500 kilometers or uh, runway number 8 with 4300 kilometers second one second one yes the runway uh, runway number 8 with 4300 kilometers because that is that will give more safety to the aircraft during landing because it's coming with much more heavier load something uh -huh. around 400 tons of 400 tons of complete weight is coming to the airport and if keeping all the safety in mind we will provide them with the longest runway so that even though if anything goes wrong the aircraft still stops at the end of the runway So in each, in, yeah. So in each base, you'll have either the length or the capacity. That is the thickness of each runway. For example, if you're taking an Airbus 380, uh, it will have a weight of say about four, uh, 480 tons plus. It will, it will have a maximum takeoff of 480 tons, and landing weight will be somewhere around 300, 300 tons or uh, 350 tons. So, so sir, each uh, each aircraft will be different. Like uh, as we said, the Airbus. Uh, yes. Airbus numbers. So it's all the it's all different, right? Yes, all are different. Okay, okay. so that that will, be, that will be different. Yeah, it depends. That is uh, the weight, the weight, uh, and the maximum payload that's coming into the uh, airport. For example, when, uh, this when is I, when it's landing and takeoff. We have to consider that as well. Yes, that is the reason. That is the reason why you are collecting the estimated zero fuel weight from the load sheeter. He is the one who is taking care of the weight for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. He takes care of the weight and he'll inform you. Yes, this is the maximum zero fuel weight we can accept. So, in case if the maximum zero fuel weight, for example, sixty one tons, he's taking the maximum zero fuel weight for for the for the sector and he's giving you sixty one thousand kg. You will plan according to that. but later on you comes to know that there is no you can't accept this much of payload to the aircraft because the weather is bad you inform the captain the captain will say yes i'm restricting the zero fuel weight you can't take 61000 you take only 60000 remaining i am taking the fuel and that in that cases it will change so the full flight plan changes from there so it depends upon the uh, flight dispatcher you just only get the details of weight from the load sheet and the remaining will be played by you so you decide whether you need to uplift the payload or not but once we done also the i mean captain captain could re rearrange or change right yes yes definitely the captain can rearrange and change it that's his decision because he is the one who is flying the aircraft so if he saying that 
sir captain it's okay 61000 is okay we can take the 61000 with the fuel no i'm not ready to take the flight you got to give me more fuel okay how much fuel do you want so he said i need another two tons of fuel so you put two tons and you calculate it so that's what and i that asked time, before like uh, so the captain uh, as you said the captain can decide right yeah see so there, uh, you know, there is no any role from the aircraft like the airline no 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 like no. there is no any yes. other authorities no there will not be any authorities in the case of flight dispatch see the, the, the captain the the i mean except the captain the, yes the captain is the one who's fly, flying it so he should take the decision if you are saying that uh, captain is okay 61 times you can take 14000 of fuel and uh, you can go so he is not confident about that he say i am not confident to take this flight i am not going to operate this flight that's going to create more pressure on us he say he is asking for another two tons what, why what's wrong with that give him two tons of fuel and you uh, see whether the payload is okay if the payload is not okay you inform the team you inform the load control that sorry due to uh, weather bad weather conditions the captain has reduced your zero fuel weight to 60 tons and we are uplifting more fuel It's no one is going to say right sir uh, sorry it's all time consuming right yes it is time consuming but we have no other options because safety concern comes up there okay. safety comes first in everything so but we can i mean uh, we can uh, give the flight chart once the captain is there right yeah go ahead no issues in that so if you are giving it early or uh, if you know which commander is operating a flight you take the flight plan and send it to the captain tell to the captain captain we are going with a foot zero fuel weight and they are requesting for a max payload uplift okay the captain will take a decision from there okay. so whatever the captain takes you finalize it inform it to the other team members they'll follow it up another thing you need not worry about the blame the captain will take the blame for him yes i am the one flying the aircraft i will take the decision regarding that dispatcher and captains you you are the only guys who know about uh, flight plans and all so you guys will discuss and decide which flight plan how many fuel what and all to take what are the problems you are going to face so once that discussion is over you can give the final to, to the local okay okay sir thank you so much so next is the carrier airport chart this will be the destination chart yes now coming to the load sheet part so uh, everyone can see the screen right is it clear yes it is yes sir yes okay so uh, we will be starting off with the first two boxes the priority address that is qu so in priority address we actually have four type of priority address that is qu qx qk and ql so the lowest priority will go for ql then we'll have qk that will be a little more priority in the case of load sheet and lm you will always put qu that is the high priority that is that should be given high priority and then we have the address as qx that is the most high priority normally that will be given in case uh, first qx will be given for moment messages then we'll have a, a priority called uh, that is uh, in case of danger the aircraft has crashed all those kind of uh, moments will be given with qx priority the remaining uh, load sheets ldms atc flight plans or uh, any moment messages all will be given qu or qx next is the address that is the destination address it will be normally uh, uh, normally it will be a seven letter seven letter code the first three letters will be the destination iata code that is a uh, airport code in this case it's caro that is c a i then the two uh, other two letters will be regarding the station manager uh, in case it is a uh, station manager means it will come as k k or k z or k l That is station manager. Yes, sir. Yeah, good. 
my screen is stuck actually i guess why i'm still on that load that load page yeah so uh, in the addresses side the first three letters will be the iata city code next will be the station managers code uh, in this case it's kd k stands for manager and d will be either the departure control or it may be k that is the station manager that is the airport station manager or it will be kl also known as load control manager then next two will be what airlines it's operating so in case if it's air india you put ai uh, or if it is uh, singapore Screen is stuck, sir. It's not showing what you are saying. Uh, what you are saying, sir? On the presentation. What is the screen, uh, what is the screen showing right now? The payload, sir. The Which one? Uh, sir, that uh, all the destination and all the things that things which you are showing in the last screen. That's what is showing over here. Now you're uh, talking about the at the down of the route to alternates, right? Near that, right? Yeah. Right, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I'm talking about the load sheet. You can see the load sheet. Yeah, we can see. It's all the there is uh, routes to alternates. Sorry, I didn't get you. There is some uh, routes to alternates. So we are on the on that page. I mean, the visible page is like that. Fuel burn adjustment, road to alternate. That page will be visible in there. Nothing else. Nothing else. Sir, one second. Let me. Okay, what can you see now? Right, it's showing load sheet and uh, load message. Passenger aircraft. Okay. Yeah, it's a flight crew standard performance. So it's load sheet and load message. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, in this, you can see that uh, there's a term called priority addresses. And uh, two codes saying Q U. Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Q U means uh, Q U is the uh, priority addresses that you will be sending. Uh, there are four types of priority address. One is minimum, that is Q L. Then you will have a intermediate one called Q K. Then we have the uh, priority, high priority one as Q U. and we have another one called as qx that is a uh, very high priority or emergency priority so normally load sheet and load message will be sent through the priority qu and movement messages like uh, the aircraft movement messages will be sent through qx uh, that's for the priority and then the addresses to whom all these details are being sent so in earlier times it was uh, manually typed and sent now uh, once since it's computerized once the uh, load sheet is released and uh, you release the aircraft uh, the moment messages and ldm will get sent automatically so priority address which address to uh, to whom that is the destination airport what under details you are sending so their address would be first three letters uh, total seven letters word that first three letters will be the iata airport code in this case it's uh, cairo cai the next two will be the uh, in charge that is to whom you are sending uh, k stands for manager so it could be kd or kl or kk or kz or kf 
that will be uh, depending about what uh, department it's going in this case it's kd that is the departure control station manager that is a person who will be uh, taking care of all the um, that is uh, the dcs system so to him the message will be sent if you want to send to the load control you can put as kl if you want the station manager to see that you can put kk or kz in case if you are sending this details to the uh, freight that is the cargo manager you can put as kf uh, next to codes is the airline code in case uh, if uh, in this case air india flight ai flight is being operated so you can put as ai or uh, in case if you are putting something like uh, as ground handling agency is working you can put as xx so in this case xx means it's uh, the ground handling agent this will be the destinations then you will have to put the origination that is uh, origin stations seven letter code so ory klo and xy so xy will be the uh, ground handling code ory is the uh, origin station that is iata code uh, iata origin stations code the next two letters is kl that is load control station manager next we have recharge date and time recharge in case if uh, ground handling agents is being handled the recharge should be done by the uh, airline which is operating so in case xy here ai is operating so in the recharge uh, column you can put as ai then you have a slash and date and time so when you put date and time you don't put the full date that is uh, today uh, what's today's date today is 8th right so 8th september 08092021 you won't be putting that you'll only putting the date so 08 slash and the time the time will be in zulu code so that's for the date and time next you will have is your initials so whoever is preparing the load sheet they are first to letters should be the initials for example if you take mine um, bijan banujan so it will be bravo bravo that is uh, b and b will be we will put it in this two boxes next is already printed that is ldm uh, i'll tell you that once we finish all this i'll tell you how that ldm part has been written next box you can see that ai3214 that is the flight number then we have the version that is we'll put the registration of the aircraft okay uh, since it's air india version uh, air india is the uh, flight number why is the version gone as f that is uh, the registration code of uh, air india is not f so why is f code put there do anyone know uh, what is the registration of uh, aircrafts that are uh, indian origin how will the registration come for the aircraft it should be i sir i guess uh, actually it won't be i uh, the registration for air india is vt victory tango okay so vt so in this case the aircraft registration is given as f so it's an european aircraft a european airline aircraft is operating with the air india number in short this load sheet is being prepared for a code share aircraft so the aircraft that's operating is from a european nation and the flight number is given is for uh, is on basis of air india that is air india will be handling the finance part and the operational part will be handling by the european country uh, next after the registrations we will have the aircraft configuration here it is 24f 114y we have 24j class and 114 economy class next we have the crew that is we have two cockpit crews and six cabin crews in case if you have another if the aircraft is going for a very long sector you might have to uh, even add some of the crews that is uh, as deadhead crew so you can put the crews after this that is 2/6 then you can see that we have another slash 
and after that you can put any numbers that is those uh, crew will be uh, sitting in the cabin that is along with passengers so that's of the uh, top portion is it clear is the information clear guys yes sir okay then the yes, next uh, the next we'll be moving on to the uh, load sheet that is uh, the weight calculation so the basic weight of this aircraft is uh, 4141375 that will be the basic weight that is the aircraft with seats uh, and all the necessary for the uh, operation that is no crew or pantry crew you will be adding 545 kgs that is total eight crews will be on board 545 kgs and pantry will be 580 kgs so the total dry operating weight of the aircraft is 42500 so as i told you earlier basic weight is uh, the aircraft the only, only the aircraft with seats will be adding crew that is uh, crew with their baggage in this case we have eight crews that is two cockpit and six cabin crews their weight will be added then pantry weight that is uh, uh, food for the passengers who are traveling their weight will also be added and total will be the dry operating weight so 42500 will be the dry operating weight now we need to find the operating weight so that we could calculate the Uh, payload that is what is the allowed pay, allowable payload for the aircraft so for that dry operating weight plus take off fuel you will get operating weight so why we are doing this is to calculate the payload okay is that clear yes sir okay then. operating weight sir, is uh, dry operating weight uh, which means we are adding the i mean pantry weight and passengers yes. no 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 we won't be, we won't be adding the passengers this will be only for the operational purpose that is uh the aircraft the crew and the pantry all only these three will be added to find the dry operating weight we won't be adding the payloads not yet okay okay sir thank you Okay, uh, so dry operating weight forty two thousand five hundred. Then we'll be adding the takeoff fuel. So these takeoff fuel will be only the estimate. That is what is given in the flight plan. That will be taken before we uh, put it for the actuals. So if in case if captain uh, is saying that our final fuel will be eleven thousand seven hundred with two hundred taxi, so the ram fuel is eleven thousand seven hundred and taxi will be two hundred. So you minus the ram fuel with taxi fuel to get the takeoff fuel. Eleven thousand five hundred will be the takeoff fuel. You add these both to get the operating weight. Now the aircraft. This fifty-four thousand kg is aircraft with fuel. That is with takeoff fuel. The crew and the pantry is ready. Now all we need into the aircraft is passenger. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, sir. So the operating weight, which means uh, adding with the all above, right? Yes, all about. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So operating weight is fifty-four tons. That is, it will have the aircraft weight, the crew weight, the pantry, and also the takeoff fuel. Now, uh, from if you take uh, takeoff weight, as I said you in earlier, zero fuel weight plus takeoff fuel is equal to takeoff weight. So here we have the fuel, and in the zero fuel weight. we only have uh, we don't have the payload so how we calculate the payload is we need some thing called average you can't get the actual uh, payload from any of the uh, from these calculations so what we do is we take the zero fuel weight that is the maximum zero fuel weight 61000 kgs and we'll have the take off fuel added to it so when zero fuel weight plus take off fuel you get maximum take off weight So that is given. So zero fuel weight is sixty one thousand kgs, and takeoff fuel 
is 11500 so the total will be 72500 and in takeoff uh, takeoff column you know the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft that is 75500 and that will be uh, put right beside to the allowed weight for takeoff that is 75500 now in the landing weight side you take the maximum landing weight and add the burn off that is the trip fuel along with it to get the takeoff fuel so what we do is we are converting the zero fuel weight and landing weight into takeoff weight to get the average so that we could uh, uh, calculate uh, how we could calculate the maximum payload for the aircraft and in this case as you all know that when you take all these three takeoff weight the lowest that is uh, among these three whichever is the lowest along with that we'll be adding this operation weight so that we get maximum payload so why this method is done is because uh, we need to know the maximum payload for the aircraft so from zero fuel weight or takeoff of some zero fuel weight or from landing weight you can never know what the maximum payload capacity will be so for that you convert all all of these uh, weights into takeoff weight and then find out among those three which is the lowest one along with that when you minus the operational weight you get the maximum payload so in this case uh, the maximum payload is 18500 now what we are uh, what we hear is this this top portion will be folded till now we know what is the maximum payload of the aircraft that is 18500 kgs is the maximum payload now you need to know how to plan this aircraft so what i'll say is this is a 320 uh, 320 i suppose yes this is a 320 aircraft so uh, in this load sheet you can see that we have a three compartment that is four compartments compartment one compartment three compartment four and compartment five <coughs> so uh, the capacity of each compartment that is how much weight you will be adding let me say i think i have uh, so uh, actually what is it that uh, I need to show you how the loading instruction report will be. So before we go for the load sheet, you need to know that loading instruction, but I think I don't have that copy of it. I don't have the copy of that loading instruction. So in the next class, I'll show you how the loading instruction will be. So what is that? Uh, we have two holes in the aircraft. Uh, one is uh, forward and the other is half, aft. So forward will have only one compartment, compartment one, which will be split into three net sections. That is each net sections uh, will have something approximate like uh, 1,100 kgs capacity. So total compartment one will have a total of uh, 3,400 kgs. So 3,400 kgs will be the uh, capacity of the air. Uh, that is compartment one capacity will be 3,400 and uh, in compartment, uh, in the aft hole, we'll have uh, about three uh, compartments. That is compartment three, compartment four, and compartment five. So in this three compartments, uh, first, that is uh, the door position will be in compartment four. And in the forward, anyway, it's, since it's single compartment, compartment one will be having the door position. Uh, in the aft, it will be on com in compartment four, that is uh, position 41. So compartment three will have two net sections. Compartment four will have two net sections. And in compartment five, we'll have three net sections. We'll have also a bulk hold in the uh, compartment five. That is position will be 52. Then we have a, a compartment uh, in compartment three and four. The compartment three will have a total capacity of 2,400. Uh, compartment four will have a total capacity of 2,200. And the tail that is uh, uh, compartment 5 will have 1400 so what i'm trying what is uh, what i'm trying to say is we'll be having approximate what i'm saying is an approximate weight if you're going for the exact side i need to show you the loading instruction report so that you know how much capacity is for each net sections uh, based on that we'll be planning the aircraft uh, here we have baggage um, as you can see that passenger count is uh, given that is we have 118 male and four child so that that means uh, 122 passengers 
are being checked in and they have about 3000 kg of baggage uh, we have a cargo of 4800 kg and mail of 200 kg so these will be the uh, results that we will be uh, getting after the check in is completed so once the check in is completed you will get the details this from the passenger side normally if you are going for a dcs that is a computerized load sheet uh, the system will auto read all those checked in passengers and their uh, baggage details you only need to add cargo and mail so in, since it's manual you need to add all this that is a uh, uh, person has must hand over you a passenger form list in which you will have uh, how many total passengers how many in j class how many in economy uh, how many males females child infant how many pieces of baggage how many what is their weight what is their total weight all this will be given to you by the passenger side and based on that you will be planning it that is what will be the position of the uh, weight for example if you have uh, say about 4000 in this how they are planned is uh, 4800 kg of cargo you have this in that 2600 kg of cargo is in uh, compartment 1 Thousand one fifteen compartment three, nine fifteen compartment four, and uh, compartment five. You will have a uh, hundred kg of cargo. The mail is also in compartment five. So when you uh, split this, that is based on the trim. That is, uh, you will be planning it out so that uh, the space of the aircraft that you can utilize the uh, complete space of the aircraft. Based on that, you will be planning it out. and baggage is also equally distributed into all those four compartments i mean uh, all those five compartments this will be totally taken and then we will be calculating for the zero fuel weight so in this uh, the total passenger load will be passenger uh, total passenger weight will be 10052 then we'll have the payload of uh, 8 tons 8000 kg of payload so the total traffic load is 18052 we have calculated for allowable payload that is 18500 kg and here our uh, actual traffic load is 18052 so when you minus these both that is allowed traffic load and uh, actual traffic load you will get the underload so why we are calculating underload is in case once you uh, submit the load sheet and uh, due to some reason a passenger gets offloaded or uh, due to because he's sick he's uh, saying that he's not traveling you need to offload that so you just can't come back and redraw all those you need to know that if you have underload that is uh, we'll be looking at the underload if uh, a person is offloading that's not a po- uh, problem but if you are accepting any more passengers you need to know whether you have enough payload to accept that passenger so for that purpose we are calculating the underload Uh, as you can see that beside that it's written underload before lmc that is last minute changes lmc is last minute changes and lmc is calculated uh, 10 minutes before aircraft departure next uh, once the traffic load is calculated dry operating weight is uh, added along with this uh, we'll be taking the dry operating weight and not the operating weight so uh, when you're taking those values please be careful because any mistake in the load sheet uh, the captain will uh, uh, replicate the same thing on the aircraft which will cause the aircraft in danger so whenever you are writing the load sheet please make sure that the values you take from each position you need to write it exactly uh, that is what is given in that for example here it is given as dry operating weight you take 42500 so you must take 42500 instead of that if you take 54000 the calculations will completely go wrong at times uh, in such case in this case i think uh, there won't be any issue because it will automatically exceed the take off weight and the landing weight but if you're taking it in the uh, in some cases with very few passenger load at that position if you are uh, taking the operating weight you will not know whether it's right or wrong so captains have a way to find out whether the load sheet is right or wrong Uh, i'll tell you that later on uh, once i finish this portion uh, this part i'll tell you how the captain finds that weight so uh, zero fuel weight will be 60552 kg along with that you'll be adding adding the take off fuel 
So here, a takeoff fuel is put in as 11,500. And in this, the takeoff fuel is given as 11,360. How did these changes come? Uh, how did these changes come in this? Can anyone tell me that? Single load sheet, we have two takeoff fuel. How did that come? What could be the reason for that? Any idea, guys? Guys, any idea? Same load sheet, how to type of take of fuel. You can say that's not a problem whether it's right or not. Don't worry about that. Hello? Anyone know? Sir, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I see. In this uh, load sheet, we have one type of fuel at the top, 11,500 kgs. And we yeah. have uh, uh, at the bottom, take up fuel 11,360. So, how come in same load field, two zero fuel and two take up fuel came? How is that possible? Sir, no idea. Okay, uh, nothing, there's nothing to be worried about. In When I started off this session, when I set up at the first one, that is take of fuel, 11,500, I said it, it was from the flight plan. Yeah. So that's the flight plan takeoff weight. That is, okay. uh, take of fuel is 11,500. And when yeah. you come to this uh, one at the bottom, that is 11,360, that is the actual zero fuel, actual takeoff fuel that captain gave you. So instead of taking the 11,500 as take of fuel, he reduced the fuel by 140 kgs. Okay okay, okay. 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 So in that case, when he reduced that 140 kgs, that that's for his that he reduced it 140 kgs. It may be due to uh, he he would have taken more fuel for the ramp, or maybe he would have uh, reduced the payload, or the expected payload reduced. So due to certain reasons, the aircraft uh, the captain will calculate, and there are chances that he'll reduce the fuel. Okay, sir. So, uh, that, uh, take off fuel here, it's 11,360. Then we'll have the take off fuel and drift fuel doesn't change. It's, it's still the same, 9,500. Then we'll have the landing weight as actual 62412. So, here, uh, as you can see, that the maximum zero fuel weights are written to the left of the uh, paper. That is, uh, maximum zero fuel weight is 61,000. Take off weight is 75,500. And landing weight is 64,500. Then we'll have the trim draw. For that trim, I don't think I could take that as a theoretical part. We need to uh, see how the uh, how to draw that lines or how to take the calculation. So that can't be done through online. I, I would really like you guys to be here directly so that I could see uh, that after teaching you, I could monitor how you guys are drawing that. So the trim part, we'll take it later on. Now, uh, the most important part, how does the captain knows that the calculation you did is right? That's very simple. Uh, as you can see that uh, the zero fuel weight, so the values you have taken is from the zero fuel weight. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the zero fuel weight, the maximum payload is calculated from the zero fuel weight. So what you do is you take the actual zero fuel weight, add with the underload, and when you add these two both, if you get the maximum zero fuel weight, 
your load sheet is correct okay once again sir please okay so what i'm trying to say is uh, to calculate the maximum payload that is allowable traffic load which weight have you taken for uh, calculating the allowed traffic load zero fill weight take off weight or landing weight to calculate the allow allowed traffic load which is the weight uh, that you have taken uh, for calculating that zero fill weight take off weight or landing weight sir so take off weight i guess uh see uh what i was trying to say is that uh, you are going to convert that is take off weight that is exactly correct take off weight is the one you will take but you are converting the zero fill weight and landing weight into take off weight to know which is uh which is the smallest of all the three so here in this uh, uh first session i told you that payload to calculate payload you have to convert all these maximum zero fuel and landing weight into take off weight so for that calculation only we did that maximum zero fuel weight plus the take off fuel see in this uh, in this portion you can see that zero fuel weight 61000 kg and the take off fuel is 11500 kg when you add zero fuel weight with take off fuel you get uh, take off weight okay okay sir then landing yes. weight when along when you uh, add landing weight with the trip fuel you will get the take off weight you will still get the same thing it's the point at which you travel mm. uh, i think you need to draw that okay okay so landing weight plus trip fuel you will get the take off weight uh, there are a couple of things that you need to do so, Okay, so I really wish that you guys were here, so I could teach you guys this point properly. Okay, so landing weight. So landing weight plus trip fuel, you'll get the takeoff weight. So when you convert all the uh, maximum weights into takeoff weight, to know which is the smallest of all the three. So in this case, uh, you uh, as you can see that when you uh, converted zero fuel into takeoff and landing into takeoff. you got three take off weights and the, out of these three take off weights the smallest take off weight comes for the zero fuel weight zero fuel weight you get 72500 along with 72500 you minus the operating weight to get the maximum payload of the aircraft 18500 kg is the maximum payload so in this in this point it's very clear that the payload is being calculated from the zero fuel weight Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. All the uh, so the weight is calculated uh, from the um, that is zero fuel weight. So, to how the captain calculates it, he'll see how from where did you get the value of the allowed payload. If you took the value from zero fuel weight point, he will add the actual zero fuel weight with your under load. And when you add these both. if you get the maximum zero fuel weight your entire load sheet is correct and if that calculation went wrong there is some mistake in your load sheet so that is the uh, method that how you will find out whether your load sheet is right or wrong so just by telling like this i don't think you guys will understand you need to manually draw it or manually write those uh, load sheets so that you will have an idea of how uh, the plan is going on so this is just an information but uh, you will send the notes right yes uh, you will send you will send the road uh, notes right so there will be the manual calculation and all i guess right yeah yeah, yeah there will be the manual calculations you can prefer that that's okay 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 right. okay so guys we can go for a break right now be back in about 5 uh, or 10 minutes then we'll go for some of the safety procedures and we'll wind up the session for today okay 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 so it's open uh, 
uh, Trivandrum because I had experienced a lots of bird hits. So that is the aircraft who will be preparing for departure. Um, will that is the uh, once uh, an aircraft Air Arabia, an Airbus 320 aircraft was uh, hit by a bird. That is an owl, and uh, it got grounded. So what happened is the bird went straight through the engine, damaging the engine leaves. That is, uh, their aircraft engine cannot start. It damaged the nose gear and also the uh, outer, that is, uh, engine cow. So, since these three were damaged, we, the aircraft couldn't operate and it was grounded. It was at the time of takeoff, so I would say the aircraft was lucky enough. But when it was, when if the aircraft have uh, took off and then it was hit by a bird, the uh, chances of the aircraft survival will be very critical. Because the aircraft won't be having enough time to uh, come, uh, that is, uh, go around for a reland. And it needs to dump all the fuel. So all those situations would come up. So at that situation, bird hits. Uh, normally, it's been controlled by the authorities. But we must be very careful that if such situations is being uh, faced, we need to uh, handle the crew and also make sure that if the aircraft is ready for departure, that is a double work for us as uh, departures, as uh, flight dispatchers, it's always a double work for us. But there are situations where we can't control anything. Next, a microburst. Uh, microburst is normally seen somewhere near USA. That is uh, somewhere close to the uh, Bermuda Triangle, you can find microburst. That is, it's a column of uh, air that is in the outer space, that is in the open air. A certain area, that is a certain area will have a column of air which will have a very high gravitational pull. Sky is so, so in case high, if the aircraft is moving to that particular fly. column, the aircraft will be sucked straight to the, that is the gravity pull of the uh, that particular column.